Alex, thanks for joining. You wrote a white paper recently about this great rotation that you see on the way. You wrote one in 2016 as well, and I'm curious as to why you think now, why you're more convinced now that it's coming than you were three years ago. Well, good morning, and uh, thank you for having me. Uh, 2016 was right after the oil price collapse and the strength in the dollar that really caused a lot of upheaval in the markets in 2015 and early 16. We thought that was an inflection point and indeed uh, there was a resurgence in value stocks for about a year and a half. But with the advent of the uh, tariff wars and with Brexit in particular not working out very well, everybody resorted back to growth, large cap tech and story stocks. And as we see early this year, we have a lot of IPOs coming out with uh, you know, companies with great stories, uh, quite often money losing situations with huge valuations. And in the meantime, uh, the PEs of the growth and tech stocks continue to expand, whereas a huge valuation compression has been going on in the mid cap uh, and the value stocks at least that we follow. So I thought it was time to put things in perspective. The problem is timing though, isn't it? Because, for example, one of the arguments is that the Fed has kept interest rates so low for mm -hmm. so long that you know everything is distorted. Mm -hmm. The problem now is it looks like the Fed is going to cut again in July. Mm -hmm. So does that not put paid a little bit to the argument that now is the time to rotate? Yeah, I think the timing is an issue. Uh, there was an article in 1999 in April uh, by a Wall Street Journal reporter uh, highlighting how overvalued Amazon, eBay and uh, American Online were compared to paper stocks, uh, forest cups and, and chemical stocks. Uh, that was about a year early. Uh, so I'm not uh, suggesting it would be spot on. I just want to highlight the incredibly compelling opportunities created by this equity market dynamic. The other part of the argument is that there's, what, about two and a half trillion dollars, according to Prequin, of private equity money out there sloshing mm -hmm. around looking for homes. People are just looking for places to invest. Mm -hmm. Is part of your argument that that capital will go to work on some of these mid-cap mm -hmm. value? Uh, it's very hard to do a hostile deal these days. I think it's rare. Uh, but there's a lot of private equity dry powder around. I think there's a hesitancy on behalf of corporations to do M&A, as well as private equity to do large deals. Uh, there's some going on, but uh, they're ho holding back uh, pending resolution of the tariff war situation and uh, Brexit as well. So I think once these macro issues become more uh, clear to most people, there will be an increase in, uh, I think, uh, over uh, takeovers, private equity, strategic, and even in activism. Uh, hostile deals are very hard to do, but uh, I think private equity in combination with working with companies and large shareholders can get uh, more deals done in the coming years. Does your argument hold up, no matter what the outcome is to the tariff discussions, even if we get more tariffs put on China, even if the tariff war heats up, and also on the Brexit side of things, if we get you know, one or other outcome mm -hmm. to Brexit? Not entirely. I think if the uh, uncertainty continues, you're going to see uh, investors gravitate to large cap tech domestic plays uh, primarily. So it's in favor of what has been driving the market. So I think we need some form of resolution on that front. You're also active. You're an mm -hmm. active investor. And I just want to show the viewers some of the companies that you're involved in. Mm -hmm. They include o Owens, Illinois, mm -hmm. Huntsman. Where are you active? What companies are you active in? Well, in all of our core holdings, we're in active discussions in a constructive way with management, as we always have been for the 30 years we've done this. Uh, we have been public with our activism on Owens, Illinois. This is the largest glass bottle manufacturer in the world. In fact, 25% of all the glass bottles in the world are made by one of their 77 plants. Uh, the company is trading at an ultra cheap valuation of less than six times PE and uh, less than six times EVD EBITDA. And we feel that by selling their European division, the European unit, uh, they could uh, generate about three, three and a half billion dollars of cash that they can use to pay down debt, buy back shares. And at a reasonable valuation, you could have a double in the share price. When you talk to the management of these companies, these mid cap value companies that you say are really being overlooked and completely undervalued, what are they telling you? Are they waiting for the private equity storm, if you like? Not at all. No, they're very busy uh, improving operations, improving use of cash, growing their businesses. So now they're all uh, very hard at work to do the best thing for their companies. And they're very frustrated in many cases uh, to see the valuation so low. In fact, in the last year alone, we've seen PEs in our universe go from 10 to 7 on average while the market has gone up. So there's a valuation compression that really reflects the uncertainty in the generally industrial and global economy as a result of the tariff wars. Many of the companies that you hold, though, for the most part, Eastman Chemical, Huntsman, Avna, Timken, Oshkosh, they're manufacturing economy-based companies. Yes. What about the idea that the U.S. is just migrating away from a manufacturing-based base, and that particularly if there is you know, more of a trade war with China and so on, mm -hmm. these companies will find it very 
difficult to continue on. Yeah, I don't think the U.S. is migrating away from manufacturing. Manufacturing is, uh, is very important in the United States. Clearly, all the attention is on the tech side. People should not forget that technological obsolescence risk uh, is a real big risk factor that should be taken into account when looking at this tech growth stock. Some of these are at huge valuations, completely ignoring uh, that technological obsolescence risk can hit them. In the meantime, the companies we are in have been you know, uh, tested uh, over time, are very profitable and are trading very cheaply. So people really should take a look at it. At the end of the day, we are all value investors. Uh, when you buy a house, a car or a dishwasher, you comparison shop, you want to make sure you get value. I suggest that uh, investors do the same thing. That's what we do. You're also involved in Europe. Tell us about the French company that you're involved in. Yeah, uh, there are several, but the main one, our largest position in Europe, is a information technology service company, uh, similar maybe to some Capgemini or Accenture, and the name is Atos. And Atos is a company that has grown dramatically through acquisitions the last seven, eight years. It has spun out one of its uh, star companies called World Line that's now separately traded. They still own 25% of it. And they have another opportunity to take their cybersecurity business public. In the meantime, Atos trades uh, at a PE of about 10 and an EV to EBIT of about 7. So it's hugely attractive. Are you seeing many opportunities in Europe? I mean, clearly, these holdings are your main fund, but you, you've been involved in Europe for, for mm -hmm. decades, too. Yeah, no, Europe is a, uh, a candy store for value investors at this moment. Uh, there clearly are some very uh, strong leading companies with high multiples, particularly the luxury companies. Uh, but uh, below the service in the sort of 2 to $20 billion range, there are companies like G4S, uh, Continental in Germany, Prismian in Italy, Solvay in Belgium. These are all names that uh, we are involved with that we think uh, represent extraordinarily good value. You're one of the more successful hedge fund managers out there. We've seen so much disruption in that space and, mm -hmm. you know, not many managers around for multiple decades. Mm -hmm. You've managed it. Talk to us about styles. They come and go. Mm -hmm. What's, I mean, obviously you probably mm -hmm. say that value is, is, is next to be. Well, well, I only know one style. I stick to what I know and stay with the universe that we're comfortable with. Uh, value investing will never go out of style. I think to buy things low at good value uh, makes sense uh, through the decades and the centuries even. So uh, we know that there's different dynamics uh, at hand and that uh, from time to time, biotech, emerging markets, high tech uh, will be in favor. Right now we're in a 10 year growth cycle. It's driven by a lot of factors, including lower interest rates and money flowing endlessly into ETFs that are again buying the same names. And one should be aware what one, one is buying. And don't buy momentum, don't buy very high multiple stocks uh, unless you're willing to take uh, the risk with it. You say you're keeping an eye on the tariff war, obviously, at China and, and Brexit as the three mm -hmm. main geopolitical influences on, on your mm -hmm. style and on those companies and on the environment. Mm -hmm. What about the 2020 presidential election? Does that change the timing of this great rotation at all? Do people wait and see what happens next? It's extremely difficult to say. Uh, clearly, if there's going to be a change in administration, it will have a significant impact on on what's going on in the economy, investor sentiment, et cetera. It's very hard to gauge that. Clearly, it's going to be a headline market moving uh, uh, aspect. Very brief question on Tesla. I know that you also have a short mm -hmm. element to your portfolio, yeah. 25 to 30 stocks at a time, and you're in and out of Tesla. Given the most recent memo and the most recent sort of uh, optimism from Elon Musk, mm -hmm. what would you be doing with Tesla now? I would short it. We are short it. Um, at the end of the day, if they achieve margins like General Motors on 2021 earnings and trade at a multiple twice General Motors, they should drop 55% from here.